Income tax 2021-2022 accrual method. Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in publication 334 tax guide for small business 2021 looking at the income tax formula, the top line, the income line, noting that we would have a sub ledger which would have the income and expenses, the expenses basically being deductions, the net then flowing into the top line of the income tax formula and the tax return page one of the 1040. In the 1040, we would typically have the schedule C then flowing in to the schedule one and then flowing to line eight here on page one of the form 1040. This is the schedule C profit or loss from business basically and income statement. So now we're looking at the accrual method. Remember when we're looking at the methods, Usually we're thinking cash method versus accrual method, but we could also have a hybrid method or a special method, which might have extended you know, contracts for revenue recognition principle and that kind of stuff. But mainly people think of a cash method or accrual method, usually thinking about the cash method as an easier method, but have to use accrual method in some instances. Those instances often driven by, if you're a small business, they're gonna be driven by the industry that you are in. And that would include things like, are you invoicing people? Do you have to then track the accounts receivable? That's an accrual account typically. Do you have inventory? Then you're tra if you're tracking inventory, then that's usually kind of a, an accrual component as well. So the accrual method is usually thought to be more, it's really thought to be more accurate of a method from an accounting standpoint, but possibly a little bit more difficult than a cash method because you can't just record all of your books in essence uh, on by basically transactions from the bank account, which you can kind of do if you're a small business and completely on a cash basis method. And also just remember that a lot of times people will, will be on a hybrid kind of method because they're gonna do what works best for them and whatever industry they're in, they might be doing some accrual kind of components because that's what works best in that industry for them, but then doing some cash components because that's kind of work, what works best for them. For taxes, we gotta make sure that we say what method we're gonna use from the start, from the first year, so that we can be consistent in the reporting later on. You typically, of course, want to have the same method for taxes as you do with the bookkeeping because that's the general rule for the tax code, number one. And number two, you don't really want to be changing methods after having made the financial statements on what other method you're using as you record your transactions. So the accrual method, and it do, and just by the way, this isn't like a tax law thing of there have some other accrual method. It's not accrual method like a mean method. It's not an accrual method by the tax code that's, that are imposing some cruel thing like making you pay taxes or anything. Normal accounting method, this is the standard accounting method, the accrual method. So under an accrual method of accounting, you generally report income in the year earned and deduct or capitalize expenses in the year incurred. What's the difference between that and the cash method? Notice we didn't say anything about cash here. We just said when incurred and when earned as opposed to when cash is either uh, coming in or going out. The purpose of an accrual method of accounting is to match income and expenses in the correct year. So it's usually thought to be a better matching principle, matching the income and the expenses, the expenses to the same period in which they were used in order to earn the income. And again, the cash method can be a little bit more ma manipulative where you end up with differences uh, between when something was earned and when you've received the cash. I think of the, ca the cash is kind of like the smoke that points to the fire, but the smoke can be kind of further away from the fire, right? Because the cat, the, if you were to do work for somebody, then you have revenue that you had earned and then the cash might not happen for like a month later until you actually get paid or something like that. So it, it's an indication of the revenue that had been earned, but it's not really at the direct location in time of it, same on the expense side of things. So income, the, the general rule on the income side. So under an accrual method, you generally include an amount in your gross income uh, for tax year in which all events that fix your right to receive the income have occurred and you can determine the amount with reasonable accuracy. Now, normally in accounting software, that's kind of like when you invoice someone, if you think about it just from a bookkeeping standpoint, 
So when you did the work, if you're a law firm or an accounting firm and you invoice them for the work you did, that means that you've done all the work and, and you have earned the revenue at that point in time generally. So that's usually when the revenue is recorded, when the work was done. You can see exceptions to this or, or like problems with this when you have like extended problems, like if you're in a construction industry and, and the work's not gonna be done for 10 years or something because you got some long project, that's when you got some funny recognition principles on the revenue side. But for most part, you do the work and then you bill someone and so you and, or invoice them, whatever you wanna call it, and you record the, the revenue at the point of invoicing because that's the point when the work was done as opposed to when you get the money, which is gonna happen at some later point, which is what you would do on a cash basis. So for a taxpayer with an applicable financial statement or other financial statement, as the secretary may specify, the all events test for an item of gross income is considered met no later than when taken into account in an applicable financial statement or such other financial statement. So an example, you are a calendar year accrual method taxpayer. Imagine you are a calendar year accrual method taxpayer. You sold a computer on December 28th, 2021. You billed the customer in the first week of January 2022, but you did not receive payment until February 2022. You must include the, the, include the amount received for the computer in uh, your 2021 income. So you can see the cutoff date kind of comparison here. Let's do it one more time. You sold a computer on December 28th, 2021. So that's before the cutoff in 2021 you billed the customer you sent out an invoice in the first week of january 2022 so in this case they're getting even a little bit more tricky here because you did the work in 2021 and if you think about the software you didn't actually send out uh you sent send out the the invoice to the customer until 2022 so usually the invoice is close to the point in time that you did the work so that's when it's recorded on the software but that's not a perfect method still because you can imagine situations like in a job cost system for like a law firm, for example, where they don't enter the information into the accounting software until after they record, you know, the, all, the, all the hours, which could have been in the prior week. So technically it should be when the work was done, in this case, December 31st, not even when the invoice was sent out and you didn't receive it until February. So that would be in 2022. You still have to record it or should record it in 2021. Now you can imagine situations where you'd make a mistake on this because the software would record it, for example, when the invoice was put in place in January 22. So, so, and that might be, you know, not as big an issue as, as intentionally or fraudulently uh, distorting, distorting the cutoff dates in order to, uh, you know, evade taxes. So the special rule, the following are special rules that apply to advanced payments, estimated income, and changing a payment schedule for services. So we got the estimated income. If you include a reasonable estimate amount in gross income and later determine exact amount is different, take the difference into account in the tax year in which you make the determination. So you might have to basically make an estimate. So do you need to go back and change the estimate in the prior year? If it changed in the following year, no, usually you're gonna go forward and change it in the following year. Change in payment schedule for services. If you perform services for a basic rate specified in a contract, you must accrue the income at the basic rate. Even if you agree to receive payments at a lower rate until you complete the services and then receive the difference. So you can imagine a situation where you're, you, you're recording the income at, at a basic rate and then you're gonna kind of have a, maybe a balloon payment at the end or something like that, which can kind of distort uh, the payments, but you should be recording, you should be recording the revenue, you know, again, as you earn the revenue. So the amount that you expect to be receiving as you earn it is what, is what you should be recording as income. Advanced payment. Generally, you receive an advance payment as income in the year you receive the payment. However, so generally you report an advance payment as income in the year you receive the payment. Now notice that's kind of a deviation from an accrual method because you would think if it was an advance payment, someone gave you, gave you money uh, before you did the work for them, then you wouldn't record it as income even though you got the cash under an accrual method because, be, but the IRS, wants you to record it in that case right so that is kind of a deviation 
to some degree. So if you get an advance payment, you gotta be a little bit more careful on, there might be a difference because they're deviating from an accrual method to do the tax code method <laughs> and reporting income in the area they want. Now that might not be as big a problem for a lot of people because you might not get uh, advance payments in most industries, but some industries like uh, you might always get like advance payments. Like if you're in an industry of a magazine uh, distribution or something like that, they pay you the annual and a lot of the software stuff is, is formatted in that way. So generally you report an advance payment as income in the year you receive the payment. However, if you receive an advance payment, you can elect to postpone including the advance payment in income until the next year. You cannot postpone including any payment beyond that year. For more information, see publication uh, 538 and section 451. So you can postpone it uh, there and that would be more in alignment with like normal accrual accounting. And then, but then obviously if you postpone it more than a year, that's when the, that's when they're going to be skeptical of, of these, of these kind of advanced payments. They're going to want their money. The IRS wants to report it as income sooner so they can get a piece of it sooner. So expenses under an accrual method of accounting, you generally deduct or capitalize a business expense when both the following apply. One, the all events test has been met. The test has been met when A, all events have occurred that fix the fact of a liability. So on the expense side of things, you got like the expense recognition kind of principle, matching principle. In other words, uh, so you all the events basically happened to, to, incur, to incur the liability. And B, the liability can be determined with reasonable accuracy. So that means, notice that even if cash didn't go out, like you didn't pay for the expenses, then you're gonna record them basically when you incurred them. So when the work in essence was done by the other person, if it was a service or if you received the goods in general, you would think then you'd record the expense even if it hadn't been paid yet at that point in time. So two, economic performance has occurred economic performance what is it you generally cannot deduct or capitalize a business expense until economic performance has occurred if your expense is for property or services provided to you or for use of property economic performance occurs as the property or services are provided or as the property is used so obviously if they're giving you uh, some physical inventory when you get the inventory you have control over over it the economic performance has taken place and you should be recording it in income whether cash has exchanged hands at that point in time or will be doing so at some future point or possibly never if it was some kind of barter transaction so if your expense is for property or services you provide to others economic performance occurs as you provide the property or services an exception allows certain recurring items to be treated as uh, incurred during a tax year even though economic performance has not occurred for more information on economic performance so if you, you're in that gray area then you could see economic performance under accrual method in publication 538 usually it's fairly straightforward but if it's not then and you're in an unusual situation publication 538 example you are a calendar year taxpayer and use an accrual method of accounting imagine you are a calendar year taxpayer and use an accrual method of accounting you buy office supplies in December 2021. You receive the supplies and the bill in December, but you pay the bill in January 2022. So you see the cutoff kind of situation. You got the supplies, you got the bill 2021, but then you didn't pay it until 2022. We're on an accrual method here, not a cash method, people. You can deduct the expense in 2021. Notice the terminology. You can deduct the expense in 2021. We're allowing you, we permit you the deduction because expenses are good usually you want to deduct them earlier for taxes they're bad normally but they're good for taxes so we get to deduct it in 2021 thanks irs because all events that fix the fact of liability have occurred the amount of the liability could be reasonably determined and economic performance occurred in that year so your office supplies may qualify as a reoccurring expense in that case you can deduct them in 2021 even if the supplies are not delivered until 2022 because it's a reoccurring type of thing that's that funny exception keeping inventories when the production purchase or sale of merchandise 
is an income producing factor in your business, you must generally take inventories into account at the beginning and end of your tax year unless you are a small business taxpayer. You, uh, if you must account for an inventory, you must generally use an accrual method of accounting for your purchase and sale. For more information, you can see inventories. So if you're tracking inventories, then oftentimes that's something, there might be an exception, but usually when you're picking methods, you want to go to an accrual method because you're going to be tracking inventory and inventory is an accrual account because when you purchase inventory, even if you pay cash for it, you don't expense it, which is what you would do under a cash method, but rather put it on the books as an asset and then you expense it when you use it in order to generate revenue in the form of cost of goods sold. So if you have inventory, then it's a little bit more complicated on the tax return because it's more complicated in bookkeeping in general. You might have a cost of goods sold calculation with the beginning inventory plus purchases minus the ending inventory giving you the cost of the goods that are sold. So special rule for related persons so you cannot deduct business expenses and interest owed to a related person who uses the cash method of accounting until you make the payment and the corresponding amount is included in the related person's gross income. Why? Because you can imagine people trying to, trying to manipulate the system if you've got one business set up on an accrual method and the other system kind of set up on a cash method. So you cannot deduct an expense and interest owed to a related per person who uses the cash method because if it was an accrual method you might deduct the expense in the, in the current year and the other person doesn't record it as income because you didn't yet give them the cash right so nothing actually happened with fat actual cash but you're saying the thing but that something took place in terms of the exchange so under an accrual method you get the benefit of the deduction and the other person doesn't have to record the bad thing which is the recourse of the invent of the income on their side which looks suspicious if you're related to the person looks like you're trying to do something funny so the IRS says we don't like that so anytime you got those related person transactions you got to be more careful because the IRS will of course be skeptical of them as they should be because you know people do funny transactions when they're related possibly try to avoid taxes on it so determine the relationship uh, for this rule as of the end of the tax year for which the expense or interest would otherwise be deductible. Uh, if a deduction is not allowed under this rule, the rule will continue to apply even if your relationship with the person ends before the expense or interest is included in gross income of that person. Related persons include members of your immediate family, including brothers and sisters, either whole or half, or spouse, uh, ancestors, and lineal descendants. For a list of other related persons, you can see section 267 of the Internal Revenue Code. Aren't we all related in some play way? It all goes back to the... Okay, no, says the IRS. It's in the, it's in the code. It's right there if you want to know who's related to who. Who qualifies as related? Check it out.